Today on the channel, I'm going to show you how to play Top of the World by Van Halen. Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to play Top of the World by Van Halen. This is one of my favorite Van Halen songs, or Van Hagar songs maybe I should say. It's off the album For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, which probably all of us know that already. This is a cool song. It's in the key of E major. And uh, as we also probably all know, is this song started its origin back on the song Jump. Eddie came up with this riff that he ended the song Jump with and wanted to create a song with it and years later it showed up on this record with Sammy Hagar okay so we're in the key of E major so there's our E in the song uh, like I said it's an E major and it, and the beginning riff sounds like this and then I'll show it to you slowly with tablature <laughs> Okay, so there's our intro, and this theme is played throughout the choruses as well, and during the verses, but he kind of breaks it up, and I'll get there uh, here in just a moment. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing uh, the same note. We're going to be playing the E on the fifth fret on the B string, and we're going to be playing an open E, kind of like we're tuning our guitar. All right, that's a unison note. Those two notes are the same pitch. And what Eddie does is he plays, uh, he basically plays around with with that riff right there and he creates a dissonance by playing this leading tone with the E and this C sharp with the E and then open B and an E okay and really what that is that's a combination of E major and a B sus4 with a resolve and a and an A major and an A sus2 back to E. Eddie loves sustain chords and he loved those tonalities and the dissonance that those tonalities created and this intro is blatantly obvious um, in that point. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're going uh, E unison and we're palm muting. We put our palm on our pick or our, our pick. We put our palm over the bridge pickup of the guitar and we lay it on the strings so we kind of get this palm muted sound okay and I'm playing this unison note slowly it goes if you notice I slide into it he doesn't just go it sounded like AI or just too uh, robotic, right? Eddie had a lot of feel, clearly. And he, he kind of starts here on the, you can start you can start on the fourth fret, you can start on the second. You just gotta get that little slide in. It's, it's very instantaneous. So every time we slide up to that E, you have that, your ear picks up a little bit on that. But it's so quick. It's like kind of reminds me of that's for another lesson, I guess, on a different day. There's the first part of that lick, okay? If you notice, I play. There's one point in there where I do the B and the E string open with a palm mute. And I'm going to go B, A, E. Just power chord B. And then an E major. The whole thing, right? 
and then he goes back into now we're gonna go C sharp minor it's like Salton's a swing but not quite so it's C sharp minor big A sus too. The Ernie Ball Music Man is perfect for that. And I'm, wind, I'm actually turning my volume down a little bit. Eddie liked to turn his volume down during like uh, dramatic parts like this. It cleaned up the amp a little bit. So sometimes you'll turn it back just a little bit. So when you hit those sus two chords, it really rings out. But one thing about this Music Man is you can, you can be like full on balls out distortion and it, it's like the pickups automatically just they know what what to do with the with big chords I think that's why Eddie was so inspired on those um, on like balance and for unlawful carnal knowledge with like the neck pickup and different tonalities because this guitar um, you know brought that out of him and Eddie was always looking for uh, not that he was looking for but he was always finding inspiration in different things and you saw it pop up on every record every single record there was a new van halen trick or uh, or tone or something and maybe later on in his life he got away from some of the things when he was really really young and some of the fiery licks and tapping but he he equally you know transitioned that inspiration into his gear and his tone and his amps and chord voicings and songwriting and things like that so he was always evolving Anyway, I'm in the weeds, as I always uh, seem to find myself. So uh, that little the C sharp minor. Sometimes I do like a B sus four, but you can do a B power chord. But it's very important to hit that A sus two. And there's this little lick. It sounds like he's going. What I'm doing there is I'm going, uh, this is basically a B. It's, it's, it's a, a perfect fourth, but it's a top of a B chord, and I'm going. So I'm on the seventh fret on the B and the E, but I'm, I'm going to play with my pinky on the ninth, and, and I'm going to be ninth and seventh like that, but I'm going to pull off. I'm going to do the same thing down two frets, and then go. I'm going to pull off. And ride down that E major scale. So it's 5 4 on the high E and then 7 5 on the B. I'm just pulling off the whole thing. So that whole riff goes. And then that, there's an overdub guitar, and it sounds like Eddie's got a lot of gain on his amp. And he goes to this neck pickup and he goes. So what I did there is I hit the um, fifth fret on the B string. And then I'm going to tap 12 frets up right over the, the, the uh, 17th fret on the B string and go. I'm going to bend up a whole step. Release, bend and release. You're going to see that theme come along in the rest of the song. There's times where you go. It's tricky, man. Eddie was really good at doing those things. Of course, he was in the studio and he could, he could just work on it until he got it perfect in the studio. But even live, you know, it was rare to see Eddie make a mistake with that stuff he just he had it down man that was his his jam anyway i digress again so uh there's the beginning of the song okay so after we come out of the sammy starts singing the verse and eddie's kind of just chunking along on the
So we're going to be palm muting and just going. So I'm just riding on this fifth and fourth on the B in the open E. And then at the you know, end of each verse, he goes B, A, E. And then we do. And that's where Sammy goes, hey, baby, right? Now, if you notice, sometimes during that verse where they're going. You might hear Eddie go. So what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm hitting the 17th fret on the B string and uh, I'm on the fifth fret on the B string. I'm going. It's almost like you're bending it the minute you hit it, you go. And I'm going to be on the fourth fret on the G string and that's going to be the 16th fret up here. So. I'm going to go up to the 19th, slide up here to the 21st, and back down to the 17th. So that's kind of like what he's doing there, and, and in between some of those verses, you, you hear Eddie do a lot of that. Okay. So that's one of the little tricks in the song. So that's that's the verse that he's kind of just riding along on. The... All right. And then he does a pick slide into the the pre-chorus, and that pre-chorus goes like this: It's C sharp, beginning of it, C sharp minor. B, A, and he goes, so what I did there was uh, A, B, and then this is an E, but we're going to do an inversion of an E. We're not going to play it down here. We're going to go, it's like the start me up chord, or the 316 chord, I like to call it. So. So after it goes, okay, then you go. So what that riff is is we're gonna modulate up to a D. So so after he goes, he goes. So I'm on the low E, on the A, the fifth fret. I'm going five, four, two, open. And then five, four, five. And I'm gonna hit this D power chord. So he comes out of the. I slide into that. Now he repeats the same figure. So I'm doing up here is I'm playing like down here you're going A, B, E. So when we, when we go up to this D, we're going to go D, E, F sharp, or it's an A actually, D, E, A, as an inversion of an A, and slide back down. So from the beginning of that little pre-chorus, it goes. And then we go. What that is, this is really weird. He goes to like this, a B flat, which is a tritone of E. Very interesting, but he goes, we're going to go eight, seven, six. So, 
And the chorus is basically like the intro. And when he comes out of the chorus, he goes B. He hits that B like four times. And he stabs that A. So they come out of that chorus a little bit different. Then back into that verse. Okay. Now, the solo part's coming up, right? But there's this really um, tricky kind of chord thing after the after the second chorus. It, it he's got to modulate Eddie. Eddie's songwriting really developed in his later years, and he started working with bridges and modulations, and he was really, really trying to perfect his songwriting, and I really respect the guy for that. So um, when the chorus hits, again, the second time through, I'm going to show you that because it comes out of that chorus into this bridge, which does a little modulation, and it's these little tricky parts of these Van Halen songs that you know I mess up a lot of times too, but... I'm going to show you the gist of it here, and uh, that's what really makes these songs kind of cool and uh, interesting. I mean, even like the little, you know, little Eddieisms and Eddie Al things that make them Van Halen tunes, right? So after the chorus, the second chorus. They do a D to an A, D A, which is different, right? He's we haven't really played this D chord really much in the song. D to A, and he's gonna go. solo so that bridge after he goes he does D A after the chorus and then we're gonna go so that's a G to a C but we're gonna be playing a G inversion with a third on the bass up to the C9 okay it's like I'm rolling back a little bit on my volume because we want that that nice uh, clean sound like that and we're going to go to a D, which is like a D power chord. There's no major third. You know, we're not playing uh, Here Comes the Sun or something like that. We're... And then we're going to do the same thing. And then G to D. So that first part of that bridge goes. Then... The third time through, he goes. We're gonna go to a low E. So B with a third, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. And he resolves to E. So we got to get back up. He modulates out of the modulation. He has to go back to the the root key. So what Eddie did there was he went. B, which is the dominant five of the E. And what's interesting is the solo is, is kind of like an E minor. So he modulates back to E, but we're going to be in E minor. So let's take a look at that solo, okay? Now the solo, um, the chords to that solo, pretty much he's going to a C. E to C. 
E to C, and then the rest of the solo when it, it breaks, that's like they're in the crybaby part of the solo, okay? He's doing crybaby during E to C, E to C, and then he's going to modulate to, um, sounds like he's modulating the G major, because he's going to go back to the... It's like the bridge for the solo. So he does that same bridge pattern in the second half of that solo. And then after that, it's the, it's the rest of the song is, you know, and a lot of... Stuff like that throughout the end of the solo or the song. So let's look at the uh, guitar solo. Eddie plays with a crybaby pedal in the beginning of the solo. You don't have to have a crybaby to play this thing right, but it's it sounds cool if you got one because that's what Eddie used. So what we're going to be doing is there's like little stops that the bass that Mikey's doing and then punches with Al down to the C. goes up to a D at the very end of that solo. So you got to remember, you got to go up to that D at the very end of that C. So the solo goes like this. Enough talking, Marty. Enough talking about this. Play the damn solo. So we're going to be up here. The solo is kind of Eric Clapton-ish. So... That's the very first part of the solo, so let's focus on that. Now, that first part is when he uses the crybaby. He goes... Okay, so what I'm doing there is I'm in the E minor pentatonic position in the middle of the neck, okay? And the reason this is E minor, most people know E minor like. But you take those f same five notes and play. Okay. So what I'm doing there is I'm going. This is an E, which is on the G string on the ninth fret. And to me, it sounds like Eddie is doing E on the 9th and then D on the 7th and then back to E on the 9th. Now one one thing about Eddie's technique which really showed up on For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, something happened between OU812 and For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge and I think it's him using the Saldano amps, his 5150 amps and his Ernie Ball guitars and his pickups. Eddie got really slippery and very chromatic in his soloing and it's it's very very hard to get his solos down because Eddie really played in between the notes and his phrasing was was you know like his fingerprint it was just you could tell it was him right and it's tough to do but what I'm doing is I'm going so I'm, I'm hitting this E I'm going and I'm bending this seventh fret I'm kind of bending it up to a, the E and releasing and then back to this E here and put in this vibrato like that. Sometimes Eddie didn't quite make the bend completely. It was close and that was like intentional. That was like he was always dancing between major and minor and mixolydian and Dorian, it's like weird. And then he goes, and he's going with his pinky, I think. So that first part is nine, seven, nine, and then nine, seven, and then ten on the B string, and back to nine on the G. With a crybaby, it sounds like. Okay. 
okay? And then he goes. <laughs> Sounds like that to me. So I'm down here. We're still in the E minor pentatonic, just in the position below. I'm on the A, fifth fret, and then A on the seventh, and then D on the seventh fret, and then back to the A on the seventh, and then D on the seventh. So I'm outlining this D. That's the, that's the, the pattern, it's not the rhythm. You go. And then. So what I did there, I'm like doing a D sus four kind of. So he's going E to D on this solo. And, and then their the bass is hitting that C also. So we're going. That's um, on the B string, it's uh, eight and then seven. And then on the G string, nine and seven. I'm pulling off and then picking and pull off. So it's a pick, a pull off, a pick and a pull off. Or you can pull off the whole thing. So from the beginning, again. And then this riff again. Okay, and then I'm going to do this little riff. This. It's a linear pattern, and Eddie is going like, um, this is what it sounds like to me anyway. You could do four strings, or you could do three. Sometimes four sounds better if you really fly. I think three strings is a, m a little more realistic. I'll change my mind tomorrow. So I'm going 14, 15, 17, 14, 15, 17, 14, 15, and then back down 14 and 17 on the B. And that's where he changes key, all right? All right, and so basically, and he's doing the wah wah there. All right, wah wah makes everything sound better. Just ask Kirk Hammett. Anyway, next part goes like this. That was slow, kind of out of rhythm there. So I'm up here on the B. Or the G. That's a G sus chord, sus four chord. So I'm up here on the twelfth fret, but I'm gonna be uh, doing this little sus. So thirteen on the B. Thirteen, twelve, thirteen, and then back to twelve. And just go down the twelfth fret there, down to the D string, and back to the thirteenth. That's what that first part sounds like. Then we're going to be resolving to this D. So it's it's a C D G D. Kind of tricky. So slowly again. That next part goes 13, 15, 17, and then trill on the, fifth, the 17, 15, 17, and then 14 on the G string. Then repeat. And then we're going to hit a harmonic on the B string on the 5th, and then harmonic on the G string on the 5th, and then harmonic on the 7th fret on the B, 
and then the G. Any whammy bars like that. So from the beginning of that lick. Then we repeat. Then repeat. And we end right there and we go up this. So I'm going uh, a linear pattern. It's like this one that we did earlier, but it's down here. And it's 11, 12, 14 on the D string. 11, 12, 14 G. 11, 12, 14 on the B. 11, 12, uh, 14 on the high E. And we're gonna hammer on, so it's. And then we're gonna slide up to the 15th. And then go back down, 14, 12, 10. And resolve back up to this E, because we're gonna be resolved back to the E major. So from the very beginning of that solo, slowly. So there you go. That's Top of the World by Van Halen. I hope this lesson was helpful and that you enjoyed it. If you did, please comment below. Please consider subscribing. And as always, have a great day. Peace out.